Recording in progress. Okay, good evening, everybody. Welcome to the March 3rd, 2021 Planning Commission meeting. This meeting is now in session, and we will start with the Pledge of Allegiance. And we've asked uh, Commissioner Levis to please lead us in the pledge tonight. Hello. Hello. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Great, thank you. Uh, Michelle, can we have roll call, please? John Marshall. Present. Peter Gower. Here. Mark Johnson. Here. Arthur Munoz. Here. Alex Felto. Here. Kathleen Taylor. Here. Paul Levis is here, but his position is vacant. So we do have a quorum. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, let's see, we'll do a oh, public comment. Michelle, do we have any general public comment? We did receive um, a lot of public comment uh, for this item, but it's for an item that will be scheduled at a later date but I put it under general public comment for tonight's meeting. There are six voicemails to be heard, so we will play that for you now. And most of the comments received were for the Canyon's Edge project that's coming up on a future agenda. Okay. Hi, my name's Noreen Suyasu, and I'm concerned about your project Canyon's Edge, the 160-acre proposal housing development, which will move the wild mustangs from their natural habitat. Please reconsider on developing the 160 acres. Keep it wild. We need to keep the horses alive and well without more development. Thank you. Hello, my name is Dee Reese. I live at 3075 Bull Rider Drive. I am calling to comment on the proposed canyons and canyon edge housing development that would be developed on 160 acres, encompassing 79 homes on steep and rocky terrain. I am calling to say no, no, no. It will impact our wildlife, our horses, it will impact native plants. It will impact traffic, outdoor recreation. This is an absolute no, absolute no. My phone number, my cell number is area 661-547-1307. Please feel free to call me at any time. I will also be uh, emailing the planning commission. I am just, this is so upsetting. This is absolutely so upsetting. This should not be. You should not even consider it. No, no, no. Hello, my name is Fabi. No case number, project name, Canyon's Edge. Um, I'm calling to express concern for the proposed area for Canyon's Edge. The reason for my concern is the direct and indirect impact the housing development will have on the habitat and wildlife in that area. The housing development threatens resources and habitat loss for the wildlife present, especially the feral wild mustangs. The wild mustangs have already experienced a habit loss due to the already existing residential areas. I'm asking for reconsideration in exploiting the 160 acres of natural and indigenous land for home development. Thank you for listening to my concern in opposing Canyon's Edge and preserving the mountains as they are. Good night. Name Giselle, case number unknown, project name Canyon's Edge. Hi, my name is Giselle. Good afternoon. This message is to express genuine concern for the proposed Canyon's Edge development in which 160 acres of land will be used for housing development. 
My concern is about the obvious exploitation of the land and the potential negative effects it will have on wildlife and local ecosystems. I believe that Nevada's wild lands are one of the greatest thing about this state and the ongoing development exacerbates issues such as urban sprawl which puts our land at risk. With growing concerns of climate change and resource use, especially in the West, we must accommodate our growth needs while also balancing the use of our precious finite land, air, and water resources. Consequently, protecting ecosystems and investing in protecting our resources, communities, health, and local environments. With all this in mind, it must be noted that the project will result in more habitat loss for the species living in those areas. I have lived in Dumanyu Ranch for my whole life. I have witnessed it evolve and grow. And let me tell you, the loss of the ecosystems in the land has been detrimental. I would plea and implore that some city council members go and explore this land um, before making any decisions and look at the wetlands that no longer have water and the impact that us being here has made to these lands. I ask that we minimize more impact, especially in the mountains, especially since we have pushed all of those wild horses back there. I ask that you please take into consideration all that I said and all of the I just ask that you take in consideration before making any detrimental choices to the land in Dimanuri. Thank you so much for listening to this message. Um, I hope you guys have a good night or meeting. Hi, my name is Mike Delolio, uh, D-E-L-L-O-L-I-O. I live at 10401 Palladium Mine Drive above the Monty Ranch High School. I'm calling with concerns about the two developments that are going to go up in the canyon above me. One is the canyon and the other one is the canyon edge. Um, I have concerns about the impact it will have on the wild horses and other birds and pollinators, native plants, the drainage which runs down the side of my house, that canal, that water under your flood canal, um, and other things, the beauty of it. Our development, which is Lennar, goes right up to the base of that canyon. And I thought that would be it, and that should be enough. But now learning about this and going up into that canyon, that is disturbing, to say the least. I know it's always about the money, but when is enough is enough. That canyon should be left alone and untouched. People hike there, cars park, take their dogs, go see the horses. I know my daughter goes to see the horses every day. Um, so it's very disturbing that something would even be considered to be put up in that canyon, which is all rock. I can't even see how they're going to do it. Um, so I hope the city and the planning department change their point of view and directions with this, these two projects, not put anything up there. We don't want Reno or the Great Basin to turn into a Bay Area where they're putting houses everywhere they can, on mountains, on this, on that. A lot of people left California and the Bay Area to get away from that, and now this is turning into one again, and that is not good. Thanks for listening. Mike Delolio, Palladium Mine Drive, 650 one one eight zero is my 
cell phone if anybody wants to contact me. Thank you. Name, Raymond, case number. There's no case. So, there's so new and I can't really check it out. Um, the project name is Canyon's Edge. Good afternoon. My name is Raymond. I'm calling to express my concern for the proposed area of Canyon's Edge. Reason for my concern is the direct and indirect impact the housing development will have on this habitat and the wildlife in the area. The housing development threatens resources and habitat loss for wildlife present, especially the feral wild mustangs, those horses. We need to save those horses for sure. The wild mustangs have already experienced a habit lo uh, habitat loss due to all the construction in the area. And I'm just asking for a reconsideration of the 160 uh, acres of natural and indigenous land for the home development. Thank you for listing my concern and opposing Canyon's Edge and preserving the mountains as they are. Yeah, I hope you understand. Uh, just want to make sure that the wildlife is still intact and we're not destroying or changing everything for them because, uh, you know, we need the animals around in the area and I'm tired of seeing things taken over in that sense. And I'm sure a lot of other people are. Hope you understand and thank you again. Have a good rest of the day. Bye. And that's it for public comment. Okay, do we have any other public comment? No, that was it for public comment. Okay. We will close public comment and we'll get on to item number four, which is appreciation and recognition of Paul Levis for his many years of service on the City of Reno Planning Commission. How many years, Paul? How oh, many? I'd have to count. I think eight, maybe is it? Wow. Angela, do you have a fancy piece of paper for him? I do. I have this this handy certificate here, which you can't see, but we'll send it to you. Um, so Paul has my echoing. Make it stop. Paul has been on the commission since 2013. So this will be <laughs> my. How about that? Still echoing. Hold on, guys. All right, one more time. Um, Paul has been on the commission since 2013, so this is his eighth year as a commissioner. And Paul, I, I can't tell you um, how much I personally have appreciated your your insight, your historic knowledge, um, and, and just your ability to to be level-headed and 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 look at issues from both sides. Um, as a planning commissioner. You, you came into this without any experience, and you know you, 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 <laughs> you've, you've done a wonderful job. Um, and I, I think we kind of lose sight, right, of how long you've been on this commission, because uh, many of the commissioners that are on have, have been on less than you, and so you've always just been kind of a staple. You've always been there. And uh, we will definitely miss you. Um, we wish you luck in, in your endeavors as you move forward. And we appreciate, again, all that you've contributed. I, I can only imagine the many hours you've spent with um, the developers and driving out to the site and working with neighbors. So I know that this hopefully will free up some of your time to, to take on some of the other duties that, that you're uh, tasked with in your life at this point. Um, but just know that we, we value you and we will miss you and have appreciated the last eight years of having you on the commission. Paul, Thank I you. Thank you very much. Go ahead. I was going to say, I echo, I echo times 10 what Angela said. Um, it's been a pleasure to work with you. We're losing a wealth of knowledge on this commission. Um, you always served with integrity and professionalism, and it was really just a pleasure to work with you in this process. Thank you. <clears throat> um, I, I, that's very nice to hear from from both of you. I appreciate it. It's uh, thank you very much. It's I just say that it's been it's been good to get to know all of you. It's been good to work with all of you. Um, I did come on. I, I know many of you have uh, more of a planning experience uh, prior to coming on. And when I first started, I was just blown away and wondered what the heck I was doing. Um, as I started getting my sea legs a little better, I, I just really enjoyed it. It's uh, um, I enjoyed getting to know everybody, both fellow commissioners and staff. Um, I learned a lot from all of you. Um, uh, from everybody really, and I'll, as an example,
example, I'll call out Mark Johnson. Um, I, I certainly look at the buildings and architecture differently now. And uh, I'm sure there's elements like that that I can say to every one of you. So I appreciate it. Um, uh, this ended up being a very rewarding experience. Um, I drive around town and, and I, I frequently drive on uh, Veterans Parkway. And that was one of the first things that came up when I was, I was uh, on new on the commission and going through that. That had been in the works for a lot longer, but at least our piece of it. Um, drive by the hospital on Longley and, and, and it's just really rewarding. And I'm sure you guys all feel the same way, but the longer you serve, the more you're going to see it, that, uh, you see a project and it's like, Hey, I remember when that came before us and, and, uh, just makes me very proud. So, um, working on things like the master plan and other projects also very rewarding and, and being able to, to have a small input into, uh, into helping shape our community. I've just really enjoyed it and want to thank everybody for the, for the opportunity. Thank you, Paul. And then uh, the good news is we'll be sending you this lovely certificate to hang on the wall so you don't ever have to forget us. <laughs> oh, I won't forget. This was very, very memorable and rewarding. And thank you can you. always thank you, though. via Zoom. You can always just log back in anytime you want. <laughs> yeah, I can. <laughs> and Paul, I just wanted to And then that you. gives me the opportunity to log out, too. <laughs> <laughs> but no, that, it's, been, it's been enjoyable. I just wanted to thank you as well. This is Michelle. So thank you for everything that you've done. And it's been a pleasure getting to know you. And I wish you the best. And please keep in touch. Yes, thank you. I hope I, I hope I cross paths with all of you in the future sometime soon. Paul, thank you. From yes. my perspective, I always appreciated your view from the far left of the podium. I knew that I really reckon, you know, recognized your political leanings, but um it's been great sitting next to you and unfortunately we're we're in a different different venue now but good luck thank you good luck paul thank you so much for all the time and knowledge and discussions and experience that you've given to us it's been a real pleasure so um we'll miss you but uh we wish you the best with your next steps and we'll definitely stay in touch. So thank you. Thank you. Commissioners, other thoughts? Well, wishes? Adam, Adam, sure. Commissioner Williams, uh, Paul, I also want to thank you uh, being the new guy and um, getting to watch all of you work and kind of learning from you guys has been a real experience. So hate to see you go, but it's going to be uh, pretty neat not to be the new guy anymore. So. <laughs> Good. Commissioner Gower. Well, I feel kind of the opposite of Commissioner Munoz. Now I'm I'm the old guy on the commission, uh, the, the one who's been on here the longest. Paul, it's been great serving with you, and you know I really respect that. Um, you know you you always strove to you know find out the facts of the case. Um, you know I know we sat in on a lot of meetings with, you know, community members and developers, just getting up to speed on projects. And, um, you know, I appreciated your, your questions and, um, you know, the conversations that we had. We've been doing it together for seven years now, which is hard to believe. Yeah. So, um, gonna miss you. And I know you live right up the street, so hopefully I'll, I'll pass you on the trail someday. Yes, sounds good. Uh, I'm miss you. Uh, yeah, I'm miss you. Paul, I, uh, yep, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was I I uh, appreciated when I first got on the commission because I, I used to be the new guy. Um, you were one of the first people to reach out to me, and you know we had lunch. We talked about uh, about your experience on the commission. I, I really appreciated that because you know I feel like you always approach things very very practically. And it's been nice hearing your perspective. And I, I think, you know, everyone has different styles on it, but I, I always appear, appreciate your, your explanation. It's always very well reasoned and uh, very clear and articulate. And I just appreciate you reaching out to me early on and kind of showing me the ropes uh, when I first got on the commission. It was very, very helpful. Good. Thank you. Okay, Paul. Well, you don't have to stay yeah. there. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody. I appreciate it. 
and uh, good luck. And uh, um, I hope you I hope you find it as rewarding as I did. I'm sure you will. With that, good night. <laughs> I'm probably gonna I'm gonna log off, so I'm not gonna stay on here. So you guys can power ahead. Okay. Thanks. Cool. Thanks, Paul. Okay. See you around. Angela, I think we wanted to make a change in the agenda. I did. Thank you for that. Uh, we, if if it uh, suits the commission, we would like to rearrange the two public hearing items. Um, the the copart item, which is LDC twenty one zero 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 one six, will go second, and the Mountain View Mortuary will go first. And um, the the reason for this, we have a, another neighborhood meeting going on tonight, and Brooke, who's our staff planner, is actually attending that neighborhood meeting on Zoom. So we've tasked him with double duty tonight. So we're trying to kind of help with his schedule so he, he can attend both Zoom meetings. Do we need a motion for that? Um, if, no, looks like no. Okay, commissioners, any questions, comments on that? Sounds good. We will move on to item 5.2. This is case number LDC 21-00029 Mountain View Mortuary. It is request for a special use permit to establish a crematory in an existing 30,000 plus square foot mortuary building. Michelle, do we have a presentation from the applicant? Yes, I believe we have Paul here and also Kyle will be here. So Paul, can you hear us okay? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, you have 15 minutes to do your presentation. Do you have your presentation ready to go? Yes, I do. Okay, so just start when you're ready. Okay, first of all, thank you, uh, Planning Commission, uh, everyone on the board uh, for allowing me this uh, few moments to uh, present uh, our uh, want and uh, need for a special use permit uh, to establish a crematory uh, at Mountain View Mortuary. Um, just for the record, my name is Paul Knoll and I am the Managing Funeral Director of Mountain View Mortuary and Cemetery. Uh, just a brief history, uh, in 1955, uh, Mountain View Cemetery opened the first crematory in the state of Nevada. At the time, it was uh, two rotothermo crematory machines performing about one to two cremations, uh, about four to five hours per cremation. Uh, both machines are still currently in use, but both are uh, in a non-compliant or not in compliant with the current regulations, uh, and that is with the air quality management. Uh, and then both machines are well past uh, their expected use, and uh, um, we are planning to uh, demolish those or actually uh, uh, render them out of commission at the time. Uh, we are looking to have this, um, or the reason we are looking to have it moved, uh, we would like to relocate it from the cemetery grounds located at the 435 uh, Stoker Avenue to the mortuary, which is just at the bottom of the hill from the cemetery. Um, we want to replace the two older machines that are currently in use that we are still using with one brand new uh, machine. Uh, this machine will allow us to increase our uh, number of cremations per day that we're doing uh, while decreasing the amounts of fuel and, and uh, emissions that we are uh, distributing out there. And uh, a lot of the reasons we do want to make the move from the cemetery down to the mortuary is to better serve uh, our, our diverse community needs as we've had uh, a lot of families wanting and wishing for different types of services, uh, traditions that they're used to, and we're trying to accommodate that and uh, bring the crematory down to the mortuary. Uh, we are looking to replace the two old machines that you saw on the previous uh, uh, slide with this new uh, crematory chamber machine. Uh, this can perform up to six cremations today. So uh, at this point, we would be able to more than double our capacity of, of uh, being able to perform cremations each day. Um, this new machine is uh, completely state of the art. Uh, it does have uh, what they call the throat air, hearth air controls, which allow us to help uh, with the emissions, uh, keep the emissions down to uh, what the uh, air quality is uh, asked on that. Um, the hearth air allows us to uh, control the temperature and the effectiveness of the machine as we're performing the cremations. Um, 
and then the uh, compression process is cycled and monitored by the automatic temperature and controls, and that's going to give us the fuel efficiency from the other two machines. I wanted to just give a little location of where we're looking to uh, establish the crematory inside of the mortuary. Um, what this will allow us to do is perform services for families and immediately following having the crematory on site, we can actually allow families to be part of that cremation process in a dignified manner that respects their wishes and the deceased wishes as well. After our services, we can go right to the crematory, place their loved one into the cremation machine. And if the families do wish or want to, they are allowed to start the process. There is some customs and cultures out there that they want to remain there during that whole entire process. And uh, this would allow us to uh, let families honor their traditions. This would be kind of a sample of what our room would be looked like or would look like uh, that families would see. We wanted to make sure that we weren't in you know, a garage environment or warehouse. We're wanting to make sure that this is something that is respectable uh, for them and for the decedent and for the community that we serve. And so just uh, uh, as cremations have uh, become more popular over the uh, last decades, um, the uh, number of Americans are, are moving towards cremation. Uh, Nevada is sitting at about 80% cremation. Um, with the crematory on site, we can offer, you know, uh, as much as we can to honor their wishes and religious beliefs and traditions. And then it'll enable us to control the process from start to finish for family. And it also gives them the peace of mind <clears throat> that once their loved one does come into our care, that we are not moving them, transporting them outside of our location for any type of services without their wishes. And we can have everything in house. Thank you so much. That was my presentation. Thank you, Michelle. Do we have a presentation from Kyle? Yes. Um, Paul, could you take your presentation down for me, please? Yes. One Thank second. You. I'm sorry. Kyle, are you ready to go? Yes. Um, hopefully, hopefully this works. <laughs> Last time I was having some issues. Let us know if you can, need. Can you all can you all hear me? Okay. Yes. Okay. And can you see my screen? Thank you. Um, great. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Kyle Chisholm, Assistant Planner for the Record. Um, Commissioner Levis will definitely be missed. Um, and I just want to say that. He was really um, always very respectful and um, polite to staff, and we greatly appreciated his um, him in that manner. So, just want to say that. Um, so, what you have here is a request for a special use permit for a crematorium. Uh, Paul did a really good job on um, overviewing this project, um, so I'll kind of scoot through this. Um, I just want to note, you know, uh, this is evaluated under the prior zoning code established prior to January 13th, 2021. 2.91 um, acre, acre site um, has the uh, existing Mountain View Mortuary uh, building on it. And it's also associated with what Paul mentioned, the uh, two adjacent parcels containing the existing cemetery and crematorium. And I'll show you that in a second. Um, and then just quick little history on when they were established here. Paul already went over that. Um, and then I just want to note that part of this request is also to, as Paul noted, to relocate the existing uh, crematorium from a non-conforming location, which is in the PF zone. And I'll show you that in the, zo in the zoning map in a second. So here you have kind of an overview of the site. Parcel is highlighted in yellow there. You can see the Mountain View Cemetery um, parcels uh, to the north. Um, there, the um, little round um, thing in kind of the center of the parcel to the north is the uh, it is the existing uh, crematory building um, where the existing crematorium is at, and so um, you know this has functioned like that for many many years, and this request um, is to relocate it down here um, to the mortuary building on the corner of uh, Fourth and Stoker. 
Um, here's kind of an overview of, of the zoning surrounding the site. Um, uh, as I mentioned, the crematorium is a non-conforming use in the PSO, which means it's not allowed there under under the under the current zoning or the <laughs> I guess previous zoning and the current zoning. Um, and so um, uh, the mixed use zone actually does allow for it with this uh, approval of a special use permit. Hence why we're here tonight. Um, some of the key issues we looked at with this um, compatibility, of course, with the surrounding uses and zones, the fact that this is bringing a non-conforming use into conformance with, with our zoning code, and that, you know, essentially this, this use and, uh, is going to be operating in an existing mortuary building and it entirely interior to that building. Um, the environmental issues, as Paul touched on, um, will be improved greatly with the new equipment um, and, and uh, essentially uh, uh, getting rid of the old equipment. It's just going to be more efficient overall. Um, and from the from the air quality standpoint and emission standpoint, um, it, uh, you know, basically the only exterior uh, feature that this will have is um, some exhaust um, through the roof. Uh, I'll show you that site plan, kind of a location. There will be some exhaust ducting um, uh, that will be uh, coming out of the roof, um, and uh, essentially. We, we have a condition on here that's recommended that kind of keeps the current operator for the life of the project responsible responsible for for any nuisances that possibly um, could could occur with this type of use. And you know, from a as a planner, where I'm not necessarily an expert on um, you know the cremation process and and what kind of occurs there, so um, that that seemed like a suitable condition to kind of keep um, the property owner developer uh, responsible for that. And, you know, the use just from the overall use standpoint, as I mentioned, it's operated there already for, um, for many, many years, just more. Um, and so the use really is um, compatible with the area the the exterior features are compatible with the commercial uses in the area. Um, just one thing I didn't, Put on here on the bullet was that there was one re there is one residential property nearby um it's about 240 feet away from the existing building um and i just didn't see any real impacts to that to that residence as a result of this request um i did re receive one voice message i believe that was forwarded to the commission um it was hard to really decipher whether it was in favor or opposed to the project or neutral um so um, you can take that for what it's worth. Um, and then staff was able to make all the applicable findings and I recommend that planning commission approve the request. And I am here for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you, Kyle. We'll bring it back to the commission for disclosures and we'll start with Commissioner Gower. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm familiar with the site from previous visits. Commissioner Marshall? Mayor with the site and received uh, communication. Commissioner Johnson? Commissioner Johnson, same disclosures. Commissioner Velto? Commissioner Velto, same disclosures. And Commissioner Munoz? Com Commissioner Munoz, same disclosures. Commissioner Taylor, same disclosures. Michelle, do we have any public comment? I did not receive public comment for this item, but I did receive a couple of voicemails. So we will play those for you momentarily. Good morning. I'm calling regarding case number LDC21-0001. This is regarding Mountain View Cemetery, um, aka Walton's Funeral Home, aka Rossburg Mortuary, all owned by the Waltons. 
Um, they have 2.87 acre site that they want to build a new crematorium. They already have two crematoriums, and they are the only funeral home um, in the Reno, Carson, Sparks, Spanish Springs area. They have millions of dollars. I live across the freeway from Mountain View Cemetery. I know how much property they have. They have at least 500 acres or 1,000 acres to build the crematorium on that site. Well, it will not obstruct anything or have um, a restaurant called Mi Casa 2 on the corner of West 4th and Stoker removed. That is what their plans are. And um, there are at least 25 people that that is their place of employment. That is where they get their money. They have been crushed by the COVID this last year. They had to close. Um, these people work so, so hard. They're so dedicated. And to put a crematorium at that site, when Mayor Hill Rashivi oh, wants this whole area to be known as the Fountain District, now what is she going to call it? They're already putting 3,000 apartments on West 4th and McCarran. West 4th is a two-lane road. road. And there's going to be 3,000 apartments Oh, it was supposed to be for low-income people because they tore all the motels well, where the poor elderly people lived to make way for uh, nice, low-cost housing. Well, now they're called luxury apartments. Yes, isn't that amazing? They'll be able to get $4,000 a month for two of them. Two of them. Figure it out. People that live here in Reno, the elderly people don't have a chance. Just remember, look at your face in the mirror tonight. You will be old one day, like me. And the previous message that I left, um, I um, inadvertently uh, left my name out. I did put the case number. I am Robin Ross. ROSS at 775-747-1712. I'm also a lifelong Reno resident. All of my family is buried at Mountain View Cemetery. Thank you. That's it for public comment. Okay, we will close public comment and bring it back to the commission for questions of the applicant or of Kyle, who would like to get us started. Madam Chair, I have a quick question for staff. Um, Kyle, looking at condition four, I don't necessarily disagree with it. I'm just wondering if you um, had a conversation with um, code enforcement and wanted to confirm that they feel comfortable that they can enforce that condition. Um, you know, I did, I did not honestly did not bring this run that by code enforcement. Um, it was kind of a, um, I don't want to say kind of somewhat of a, not a last minute, but it was, at, it was, um, the issue kind of got brought to my attention late, a little late in the game, so to speak. Um, so I, I did not talk to code enforcement about it. Um, I wouldn't see, based on the wording of it, I, I wouldn't see why they wouldn't be able to enforce it, enforce it, but, um, so, so Commissioner Goward, Jeff Borkhart, um, Planning Manager for the record, <clears throat> I'll step in here. So this condition is pretty um, similar to language that's used in code 
um, for other different types of nuisance provisions and code enforcement typically takes that for odor, for light, for sound, whatever the case may be, um, and is able to go out there and enforce it. Um, the reason is, is that we, we needed a condition on this project in order for, say for example, Mountain Dew goes away and somebody else takes over this project. This entitlement runs with the land. And so there needs to be a condition on this project so that anyone who takes over this um, has something to live by and code enforcement has the ability to enforce those provisions. Otherwise, it would start revocation proceedings, in which case it would come back before this body. And so that's the reason why that condition was added. Okay, that's helpful. Thank you. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Kyle. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thanks. Commissioners, other questions? Discussion? No other questions or discussion? Are we moving on to the motion part? Um, Madam Chair, I have a quick question for staff. Um, the, the, the last person that made a comment had talked about uh, shutting down the restaurant, uh, removing it. Was, is, there, is there any validity to that? Is that just uh, what she feels is gonna happen? Um, yeah, that is not a part of this request. Uh, nothing's been presented with this special use permit that um, identifies the restaurant as either a part of the site or or a demolition of it. Um, and the applicant might might be able to answer for for sure if they if they purchase the property or something that I'm not aware of. But I am not aware of any plans for to demolish the restaurant. Paul, did you want to respond to that? Yes, uh, Commissioner Minos, thank you for that 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 question. Uh, no, there is no plan to uh, take over the restaurant located. Uh, we actually share the same parking lot. We've always had a really good relationship with them. Um, actually, we uh, send a lot of families over to them for after services. So uh, the the relationship between the the two locations has always been great. There's never been any dispute. I've been working there for five years and 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 work with them really well. But we have no plans of of taking that over or or expanding or, or moving uh, in any direction at this at, at, at this point, so. All right, thank you, Kyle, and thank you, Paul. Mr. Johnson. Madam Chair, thank you. Kyle, just a, uh, maybe it's a question. You talked about how the existing um, crematory location is non-conforming on the, uh, the PF zone. Uh, the applicant indicated that they were gonna be uh, dismantling and, and getting rid of that. Is there anything, I guess, from the city standpoint uh, that that gets, uh, you know, as a use gets clarified or somehow as, as a part of this, that the city becomes aware that that non-conforming use goes away? Is there a way that that is tracked or uh, even a need to track that, I guess? Boy, um... I am not aware of a tracking mechanism or process that we have in place for um, for non-conforming uses. Um, uh, I I would assume, um, yeah, and, and it's not really it's not really tied to this request. Really, it's a different a different parcel altogether. Um, it's existing. I, I, I mean, I, I suppose you, you know, if the planning commission desired, they could, they could condition that. Um, but I just don't know, uh, you know, if it's the fact that it's already existing. I don't, I don't know that you can really, if there's a nexus really to condition removal of a, of, of that use on that property. So, uh, it's a, that's a tough one. That's a tough question. Oh, and I appreciate that, Kyle. I actually wasn't looking at it in terms of uh, you know a condition. I recognize they're two different properties, and, and, and maybe this is. I, I guess I'm going with uh, 
the chairs move into discussion. It's more almost a question that we're, it seems like what's presented here is, is obviously tied to a particular site, but uh, they're, you know, as part of the presentation, as part of both staff and applicant presentation was discussing the, basically the decommissioning of an existing system. And it, it just was a question as to whether that was something that the, the city had any, uh, any need or desire to track, or if there was any mechanism out there where it needed to be looked at. So uh, it doesn't sound like there is, a, um, I just was asking the question. So I appreciate that. Madam Chair, that was, that was my only item for discussion. Mm -hmm. Okay, commissioners, other discussion items or a motion? Madam Chair, I'm ready to make a motion if you're ready for one. Okay. All right, in the case of LDC 21-00029 Mountain View Mortuary based upon compliance with the applicable findings, I move to approve the special use permit subject to the conditions listed in our staff report. And I can make all the findings. Great, thank you. We have a motion. Do we have a second? A second, Commissioner Marshall. Thank you, Commissioner Marshall. We have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Okay. Michelle, can you take a vote for us, please? Yes. Kathleen Taylor. Yes. John Marshall. Yes. Peter Gower. Yes. Mark Johnson. Yes. Arthur Munoz. Yes. Alex Felto. Yes. Motion carries unanimously. Great. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Thanks, everybody. Good night. Okay. Move on to um, let everybody clear out. Hopefully, we have Brooke. And we'll move on to item 5.1. Um, this is case number LDC 21 0016. Copart, a request has been made for a special use permit to expand the non-conforming use of a wrecking yard, salvage yard, or junkyard outside. Michelle, do we have a presentation from the applicant? We do. We have Dave Snowgrove present. Dave, can Great. you hear us? I can. Okay. Can you hear me? Are you ready to present? I am. Yeah, I can. I'll switch over and share my screen. Okay. Let me know when you're ready and I'll start the timer. You have 15 minutes. Okay. Now let me put it on the slideshow here. There we go. Well, good evening, Madam Chair and members of the commission. For the record, I'm Dave Snellgrove, Planning and Right-of-Way Manager with CFA. I do have some folks with Copart uh, also with me. They're joining from Dallas and, and Arizona. Um, if they need to speak on anything, if you have any questions operationally. Uh, I'd like to start out the presentation. I want to give a big thank you to staff who worked with the code enforcement. This is an after the fact special use permit. There was a code compliance issue that, that came out uh, regarding the Copart site, and I'll go through it in detail as to what it was, but I met with Michael Yarmy and also uh, with Brooke up at the site and also Brooke again with Brooke and Frank Peralta. And I've also had a good conversation today with uh, Mike Michelle. So <clears throat> this is a non uh, a special use permit for the expansion of a non-conforming use, which is identified as a wrecking yard, salvage yard, junkyard outside. That name of what this is in terms of the use really kind of a misnomer um, and I'll go through what Copart is and, and what they do and how they do it and you'll see the point that they're not really what you think of when you talk about a wrecking yard, salvage yard, or junkyard. Property is located uh, just south or right, well a little bit more more to the west of the Stead Boulevard in North Virginia intersection and incorporates three parcels and I'll go through those in greater detail later. These are photos that, that I got from Copart. These are different sites that they have around the country. And it kind of shows, much like the previous slide did of the Reno site, that there's a certain level of organization and neatness to what they do. And that's carried on through sites around, around the country. Ooh, who are we getting? Can you stop the time for a minute? <laughs> Oh, hold on, that might be me.
Let me close this. Yeah, that was me. Sorry about that. Um, so the sites themselves, all these sites are, are actually not paved there. I'll have a, a ballast rock on an aggregate, aggregate facility, but they're neat and orderly and clean. Um, what does Copart do? Who are they? They're a resale and remarket, uh, use wholesale and salvage title vehicles. They sell them through online auction to their members. They have about 200 locations worldwide, 170 of those being in the US and eight locations in Canada. Sell about 2 million cars per year. And, you know, the use that they have keeps, uh, keeps different crash vehicles from potentially getting out into the hinterlands and dumped as, as an illegal dumping situation. So they do provide a good benefit in that. They do, most of their work is with insurance companies and cars that have been totaled and they get auctioned off and then someone else will salvage and strip them out. But that is not done at this site. So I get to what does Copart do? Uh, what, or what don't they do? They're, they do not dismantle any vehicles at the site. Uh, they don't have customers going through the site and picking and removing parts off of cars. The cars are, are brought in whole and they're sold whole. They don't engage in any vehicle wrecking at all. And the way that the cars get around the site, those crash vehicles, they're not driven around the site. They're moved, and this picture shows with a loader and a forklift. Uh, Copart's not a junk and wrecking yard. They operate, their hours of operation are like any, any standard business, uh, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. They don't have extended hours. They don't do weekend hours. Copart also has a, a rigorous leak and spill protocol because they are dealing with vehicles that crash. Most of those fluids drain out of the crash site or on the way there, but they do have a protocol if any are leaking when they get to the site and how they handle them before they get out into the general yard. It, Copart has a big environmental responsibility program and, and things that they do within their company that uh, amount to a lot of achievements through new technology and enhanced spill controls. Uh, they are, try and be a very good partner uh, with the communities that they're in and take good stewardship of, of the land that they're on. I do have some folks here that would be able to speak more to that as we go through the presentation or, or if you have any questions. They do offer and have enhanced uh, compliance management and also uh, effective stormwater best management practices. And as mentioned before, they have enhanced spill response and they have some treatments that they use if they do have a spill. Sometimes they do, but they try and be very careful with anything, anything they're handling. Now, the actual parcels themselves, mentioned there were three parcels earlier. This parcel here that's closest to the intersection of Stead Boulevard and North Virginia Street, uh, that was an original parcel that was approved in 1991 under North Valley's Wreckers. Uh, Copart began to lease this site in 2014. Shortly after that, they realized they were running out of space and they moved on to this parcel next door. All this property up here had at one time been zoned straight industrial in Washoe County, which would have allowed for this use. And they moved on to this middle parcel and then in 2017, subsequently moved on to the parcel to the west. Both of these expansion areas in yellow our expansion of a non-conforming use because all this land has been rezoned over time to industrial commercial, which industrial commercial doesn't allow the wrecking yard use, um, industrial, straight industrial wood. We are looking for a special use permit for, to, after the fact, allow for this expansion to occur. This just gives you some photos of the organization of the site. Um, you saw it from aerial view, and this is from the ground view. The views of the site, this is a really great location for this type of use. Um, not only do they have eight foot fencing around the site, which helps to screen anything close by, but also the topography of the site has a little bit of a roll up over the hill and there are hills. Um, I don't know if they're big hills, but there are hills in topography that help block and screen most of their site from different vantage points. You, you have to get to particular locations to really begin to see into the site and there's really not much opportunity close by. I mentioned that the wrecking yard, salvage yard, et cetera, that that was kind of a misnomer. One of the things that looked at early on with staff was trying to figure out what the classification was. Towing an impound yard is very, very similar to the use that they do. 
that use is allowed in both I and IC as a permitted use, whereas the jump to wrecking and salvage yard would require a special use permit, which is what we're in for. The reason I bring up the towing and impound yard, it does allow for fences up to 10 feet tall, and we do have fencing on the site that's already existing. It's been existing for years since Copart moved up there um, that is eight feet tall, which goes two feet beyond the standard uh, height allowed. Uh, but that is addressed also in the staff report. So I wanted to just point out that we do have fencing goes a little bit taller, but that does help in general screening. So the striped area of the site uh, and the site plan is all the storage areas and the darker gray areas are the driveways that we'll have. I had mentioned before, I had a very good call with, uh, with um, Mike Michelle earlier today. I thought we were gonna have an impasse on some of the language relative to condition nine. Um, I think that he's got some language that will definitely work out for us. So I'm not going to go too much into detail on anything of this, but one of the things that we, we are looking for and kind of need to have is, is some impervious nature of surfacing in the storage area because the cars are protected from leaks and how they handle them. And then also they're not driven and the engines aren't started on site. <clears throat> So this is the condition, the condition nine. The one thing that, that Mike and I did not get to address is this last sentence, all paving and asphalt grindings shall be completed and installed on all three parcels comprising the subject site 18 months from the approval of this permit. That language was a little confusing to me, so I wanted to get it on the record tonight that I would assume that that is from the, from the approval of a grading permit and not the approval of this special use permit. The allowed timing on the grade, on getting a grading permit is 18 months uh, per condition too. So I so wanted to make sure that that was, that was there and stated. The yard area uh, treatment that Copart uses around the country is uh, this, yard, this yard rock ballast surfacing, which is two to four inches of uh, crushed clean rock. It's similar to what you use on railroad grades and then aggregate base below that clean rock doesn't present the dusty nature that aggregate base can. So it helps keep dust down. That is what they're currently using on the site as well. <clears throat> so I can skip over that. I would like to have uh, Jeremy uh, Meltabarger, who's the Copart National Property Manager, uh, just speak for a very brief time and then I'll close, close my presentation after that. Jeremy? Sure. Thank you, Dave. Um, yeah, I just want to briefly uh, talk about, you know, the using the rock and ballast materials um, aids in the permeability um, around the country. Uh, that is our typical cross section that we use. And um, we also adhere by any and all, you know, imposed uh, stormwater regulations at each one of our facilities. Um, as well as, you know, any Army Corps of Engineers or anything that's related to our conditions that are put on our uh, development permit or uh, use permit. Um, so uh, with that, I'll turn it back over to Dave. So just like to close, we're in agreement with staff's recommendation. We believe that all, all the legal findings can be made. Um, just like to make sure that we get some clarification on the condition. Um, as I mentioned, I had a really good conversation with Mike Michelle, so I think he can address what kind of language he was he was identifying. With that, I'm available for any questions, and I have a whole team of Copart folks if you have questions that I can't answer. So I thank you very much for your time. Great. Thank you, Dave. I think I see Brooke multitasking. <laughs> Let me. Good evening, Planning Commission. Brooke Oswald, Associate Planner for the record. Let me start up my uh, uh, screen and we'll give a brief presentation. Is that visible to everyone? Yep. Wonderful. As was mentioned, this was originally approved in Washoe County under a special use permit. That was approximately 1992 that that happened. There were several conditions that happened with that. Uh, we're really looking at that approval was an auto wrecking and salvage, and that's why we've moved forward with the non-conforming use of, of auto wrecking and salvage. Uh, the city did in, annex this property in the early 2000s, 
and then it established the industrial commercial zone that Dave mentioned. Um, auto wrecking in that situation under that zoning became non-conforming. And then what we saw was um, to, that use being expanded twice uh, over a period of about uh, five, 10 years. Um, should be noted this application is the result of a city enforcement. There was a call, um, an enforcement um, call on this. Uh, it was investigated and determined uh, that they were uh, not in compliance. So the several key issues that we looked on this first is that compatibility. Uh, this is in an area that has uh, either vacant land, uh, federal lands in close proximity, uh, commercial railways, um, and looking at overall compatibility. Additionally, environmentally, uh, our concerns were the fluid and chemical spills, the dust and track out, and then the invasive species that could happen in that area by the disturbance. Uh, third uh, major concern we had out there is stormwater, uh, looking at the water uh, quantity um, and requiring, you'll see a condition that requires an additional hydrology report that would need to be done at the building permit stage. And then additionally, water, water quality and looking at that oil separator and low impact development standards being applied. And then lastly, we're looking at the visual impacts. So on that, we're looking at our fencing and our landscape that Dave uh, briefly discussed. Dave went over the corporate policy that I think very well. I have visited the site, very professionally run site. Um, and overall, just their protocol and, and management protocol and manuals that they have is in entirety, those were shared with staff and reviewed by staff. Um, and find that is a very strong component of, of this company. Um, additionally, what we look at, you'll see condition four, um, as Dave described this use as being more uh, as a towing yard or than a wrecking yard, we really limited what could happen in this use from the initial SUP approved from the county to the uh, SUP now really just allows the specific use of co-part of um, those vehicles. They're not dismantling those vehicles, wrecking those vehicles or parting out those vehicles in any way they are sold in, in entirety and as a whole. Um, so uh, several of the recommended conditions that help staff uh, to make the findings and and to look to an overall approval of this. Brooke, let is, me interrupt uh, for just a sec. Can you yes. can you move your slide? We're still on the first slide. If you're, oh. I think maybe move it to the recommendation slide. Sure. Let's see. Did that not move? It did not. Let's see. Is that? I think you may have to just double click on slide number four. Okay. Here we go. Well, I'll go through this first. So here's kind of the key issues, stormwater, visual impacts, environmental, and looking at the prevention and mitigation. So as we're looking at those recommended uh, conditions, um, there is a condition for additional, if there's any additional uh, governmental oversight, they're going to need to provide all those permittings and the oversight for that. As I mentioned before, we have that limitation of that use. Um, we do have a paving and surfacing and also looking at emergency circulation and circulation of the site as a whole. A lockbox will be required for fire and additionally the area uh, drive aisles will need to be paved and then additional surfacing uh, that Mike Michelle can address a little bit uh, more as, as, um, as questions go on. We have a number of stormwater requirements. Those are going uh, basically to our public works design manual. Also in the North Valleys, we're requiring that one to 1.3 uh, mitigation requirement. And then um, we have a couple conditions that deal with uh, appropriate landscapes. So we're looking at water wise uh, landscapes, drop tunnel landscapes along that front, uh, the frontage of the property. And we're also looking at an invasive management on the property as a whole. Um, as Dave brought up uh, on condition nine, the bottom condition was written uh, by staff for the 18 months. The intent of that was 18 months from the approval of this special use permit. Um, this staff's um, reasoning for that was based on uh, the, these are two non-conforming uses. Um, we have concerns, environmental concerns and stormwater concerns on this site. And we wanted to make sure those were addressed quickly. Um, if, if we had 18 months of a grading permit and then 18 months to get it done, we're looking almost three years until we could actually move forward uh, or potentially could have that site up to um, a city conformance standard. And so the intent really was to push this non-conforming use rapidly to come up to conformance across the entire site. 
So with that, and uh, as, as presented by the applicant and the staff report and the conditions as written, staff can make all the applicable findings and does recommend approval of the project. I'm available for questions as necessary. Thank you. Thanks, Brooke. Let's bring it back to the commission for disclosures. And let's see, we'll start with Commissioner Munoz. Uh, I visited the site and um, I don't think there's any correspondence. Commissioner Velta. I visited the site and I no course did not review any correspondence. Commissioner Johnson. Mr. Johnson, I'm familiar with the site and I believe we received one email on this that I reviewed. Commissioner Marshall. Same disclosure. Commissioner Gower. Commissioner Gower, same disclosure. Uh, Commissioner Taylor, same disclosures and I received a voicemail from the applicant's representative. Michelle, do we have any public comment on this item? We did receive one public comment on this item. It was forwarded to the Planning Commission and has been entered into the record. Okay, we will close public comment and bring it back to the Commission for questions of the applicant or Brooke. Commissioners? No questions? Madam Chair, Commissioner Johnson, um, I guess I'm, I believe I understand how we got to this point, but I just want a quick question for Brooke. Um, in the applicant's presentation, there was uh, sort of a discussion about classification of the use of this, you know, this being maybe more of a impound type use than a wrecking use. Um, under which should, there would be no special use permit. Um, are we moving forward with this simply because of the classification that it was done originally at the county, therefore how it was brought into the city, or was there discussion about the actual classification of the use and how that would be treated by the city? Certainly, we had initial discussions about this, about the classification of the use, and it really comes back to that original SUP uh, established through the county and the grandfathering of that. That was for an auto and wrecking yard. And so we wanted to make <clears throat> in the expansion, someone could still go in and open an auto and wrecking yard. And so <clears throat> the ability through this SUP is to come back and limit that original SUP um back into something that's more would be more conforming to something that would be allowed within this zone that auto wrecking and towing so you're seeing that condition four that really limits that auto and wrecking use back to something that's more of a towing so it's a it, it's it's a way to uh amend a previous um uh sup and and to kind of avoid any confusion on what a future use or future owner could do with that property Okay, uh, thank you. I appreciate that. And then I guess the the next question is kind of the, the sequencing of this. Uh, because as you noted, this is being brought to us as a result of a code enforcement issue, uh, rather than anything that the applicant uh, was looking to do. Um, am I correct in understanding that what what we're requiring through the special use permit is that the applicant essentially has to move forward with the improvements noted in the conditions in order to satisfy the code violation. So essentially we're, we're dictating as the city, the work that needs to be done on the site in accordance with the special use permit in order for this to continue operating as it is. If I basically spell that out so instead of the applicant saying this is what we want to do and we're conditioning what that is this is actually the city telling them what they have to do in order to become compliant with uh, the the codes and that that particular zoning uh, that is, that is correct <clears throat> you know this as I mentioned this is brought forward as code enforcement uh, they do have code enforcement does have the ability to citation and continue to move until this is brought into conformance 
um, the applicant in good faith has come forward to show that they want to come into conformance and find a conformance. And so um, <clears throat> this is the result of an enforcement and to get them sort of out of the enforcement, they would need to comply with the, with the conditions of the SUP. Okay. Um, thank you, I appreciate that. Cause I think that was where um, in the timing discussion that you were looking at um, in talking about basically they have to apply for the building permits within 18 months. Um, I guess my question tied back to that is, is that, is that still an applicable way to approach this if it's a code enforcement issue or um, it, was there discussion about that time period um, being shortened in order to address the, uh, the, the fact that it is a, a non-conforming situation currently. Correct, that's why you're seeing title or uh, condition nine written the way it is, saying that it's 18 months from this approval, not the approval of a grading permit, which could be 18 months from now, and then additional 18 months. We really wanted, the intent of that condition is to really push the applicant to um, expediently uh, come into conformance and reduce, you know, where and mitigate for uh, the environmental and some of the stormwater issues that we have concerns about on that site. Okay. Um, so I, I think that answered the question. So basically you're, you're talking about condition nine, which has the 18 months, but I'm also looking at, at condition two, which is the standard uh, requirement for all building permits being applied for within 18 months. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I guess that's where I'm, I'm saying that you could do everything that's not tied to the building permit potentially three years from now under that particular condition. Because you could apply for a permit uh, in 18, 18 months from now to address landscaping concerns um, and some of the other, uh, I mean, obviously the hydrology is a big one, but there's uh, questions with respect to, um, you know, the landscaping, the BMPs, all of that. Uh, if that's part of a building permit, there's 18 months to execute the building permit. So you're still 36 months out potentially with some of the improvements. So that's where I go back to not just condition nine, but condition two. And, and again, going back to my initial question, this is a code enforcement issue that we as the city are requiring. So was there discussion of actually shortening and, and making this be brought into compliance uh, faster than uh, maybe an applicant driven application? Sure, I, I think that's why we linked it to actually the installation of, of the paving and the grindings because that will kick, they will have to have that done and to have the grindings and paving in, they will have to have their stormwater done. So those are the two big one are the paving and the stormwater. Um, if, if we have a little bit of lapse on getting the landscape or some of the invasives or some of that, those, those are something we can work with them over the next couple of years. Um, but we really wanted to make sure, that's why we linked it to actually an activity being done, is that we wanted to, to push them to get their, their building permits, grading permits are gonna be in their stormwater and all that is have to be in before they can grade. And so they have 18 months to grade or have 18 months to get paving in, they need to have everything lined up prior to that to make sure they're meeting that, that expectation of 18 months. Now, so that, that's the intent why we linked it to an actual construction activity. Thank you, Brooke. Um, Madam Chair, I, I guess my next question is essentially uh, for uh, the, the question on the gradings in condition nine. So unless there's a follow-up to where my line of questioning was, I'd like to continue with that question for Mike Michelle. You have the floor, Commissioner Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. So uh, Mike, uh, it sounds like you and the applicant had a conversation about the proposed condition to modify the materials that would be acceptable uh, for the various uh, pavement sections on the site. Um, have you reviewed what's being proposed and can you speak to how the city feels about it? Sure, uh, good evening, uh, Planning Commission. Mike Michelle for the record. Yes, I, I did have a conversation with Dave this afternoon. Um, and knowing that the surfacing material 
is a sensitive issue with them and as well to us. Um, and knowing it's desirable for really all parties to reduce the storm runoff and knowing that the type of surface you apply will affect this. Um, I would recommend that we consider ma surface materials other than grindings. And I would recommend that we modify condition number nine with a sentence at the end of it saying something to the nature of surfacing material other than asphalt grindings may be considered subject to the approval of the administrator. That additional sentence, I believe, should be satisfactory to both parties that will allow us further time to evaluate the surface material uh, that is acceptable to both of us. And again, knowing that we want to, uh, we want to as much as possible reduce the storm runoff um, from this site. Okay. Thank you, Mike, I appreciate that. I, I think I captured what you were saying in my notes. So uh, that, that was the answer to the question. So Madam Chair, thank you. I, I have no further questions. Commissioners, other questions? Madam Chair, may I continue with kind of that line? Mike, uh, Michelle, can you, uh, I guess I'm a, how do we balance the, um, you know, the, the more impervious nature of the grindings um, and therefore hopefully preventing any sort of groundwater contamination from the, from the um, wrecked autos? with you know probably a good desire to have to decrease um, runoff um, what 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 uh, protects the groundwater here from contamination from this this kind of use if the surface is is not as impermeable as the asphalt gr grindings well i guess i would answer that by um, by saying that the applicant is required to have certain BMPs in place that uh, as best as possible uh, protects stormwater runoff and they have existing spill and containment plans in place today and they are subject to um, certain permits from the state that mandate that they have these spill and containment plans um, in place. So I, I think they have plans in place. Um, even if there was an impervious surface, um, still, you know, it's not a guarantee that, um, you know, that, that spills don't happen. So um, I guess I'm, I guess I'm relying to a certain extent on um, the existing uh, plans that um, the applicant has in place. Okay. Um, this is, thanks, Mike. This is a question for uh, Brooke. I think Brooke, reading, you know, this is following up on uh, Commissioner Johnson's point, reading uh, condition two with condition nine, it's not clear. You know, I would suggest that that we add something to condition two that says, um, you know, that that makes certain that condition nine controls and the eighteen months uh, in condition nine controls that you know they're going to have to get their building permits for those other, you know, whatever's required by condition, the 18 months in condition nine, you know, pretty soon, rather than having, you know, having that issue be left uh, for somebody to try to interpret in the future. Um, so, you know, maybe 
in condition set in nine saying notwithstanding any other condition they have 18 months to 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 do this just so it's clear that what controls is condition nine um then i wanted to run another condition by you um you know what i'm this is we're, we're here because uh this company uh twice um you know, violated Reno's city code about uh, expansions without permits. Um, and so I wanted to suggest something like that uh, in a condition that says, um, you know, if there is further expansion without the necessary permits, this permit becomes invalid. Um, so that we have you know, a pretty solid guarantee that the activity that's been taken so far and why we're here will not happen again. So we'll probably, maybe that might be a better, or do you see any problems with that? Um, you know, I would, I would actually maybe defer to Carl and just from, I mean, that there's a legal aspect to that and just making sure that that, that would be a condition that we could meet legally. I think you, that condition can certainly be offered. And Carl, can I suggest it? not offer, but can we legally impose it? I think we can. Okay. So we can discuss under discussion, we can discuss whether we want to do that. Right. Um, that's all the questions I have. Thank you. Commissioners, other questions? Okay, are we ready for some discussion? Madam Chair, I'm sorry, I was a little oh, slow sorry. on the a little slow on the mute button there. Um, Brooke, do we have as a city a, um, or maybe it's a, another agency requirement that if this use were essentially to be discontinued, is there any sort of a um, required remediation plan or decommissioning plan that this operation would have to execute prior to vacating the site? Because, and I think you probably know where I'm going with this concern is that we don't have want to have a, you know, a brownfield situation here on this site. So, what kind of recourse does the city have uh, on the decommissioning side? Certainly, I think that with the auto wrecking and 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 vehicles, there's a state oversight on this. Um, uh, then we're going to see Washoe County oversight, and then our own. We we do not have a, a bonding or anything requirement at this time uh, for any remediation or anything that happens. I think that you know would, uh, as I understand it, would fall on the private property owner to remediate the land and their liability in that. Um, but from the city's point of view, and Carl may speak, be able to speak to this a little bit more from legal point, what we would we would have uh, the ability to enforce if if we did run into a situation like that. Um, but that is certainly is a concern, you know, has been concerned from city staff's point of view of, of what what happens if this site becomes uh, discontinued or they pull out, and we find that remediation has to happen. So. I believe that larger that's going to be, I believe, the oversight of the state and the county through the health and the state through their permitting that's going to be required. And that's not something, Brooke, that we typically um, impose essentially as part of a, a use permit that there has to be some sort of decommissioning plan that meets the city standards. We just defer to those other agency requirements. Yeah, that that's correct. I, I'm not familiar with anywhere where we have done a decommissioning plan of a of a of a use. I'm not saying that it hasn't happened, but um, you know, you you could possibly see a bond being laid on the property or or some other method. Um, but I'm not familiar with the city having done that on any sites that I'm aware of. Thank you, Brooke. Thank you, Madam Chair. I think I'll reserve any other comments for discussion.
Okay, I think we're headed that way. Unless commissioners, other questions? I don't see any. Okay, D moving on to discussion. I think Commissioner Marshall, you had some concerns that you wanted to bring up? Yes. Um, so, you know, we're, we're obviously in the position of the uh, applicant here is seeking forgiveness rather than asking permission because of their illegal conduct. Um, and so, and it's happened twice. Uh, and I'm not certain what other consequences they're, they're doing other than having to come in for an application that they should have done in the first place. Um, and we have the same operators. So it's very concerning to me that um, we have something in place that stops the behavior that that uh, has occurred twice already and that so i uh, propose a, a condition that uh, when we come to when we come around uh, to the motion to um, if we approve it to condition it further that if there is further uh, unpermitted expansion um, that uh, this permit cease to exist. Whatever is the, I'll leave it to staff to come up with the appropriate language for that. And I don't know if I can turn it over to Commissioner Gower if he has other discussion items. Commissioner Gower. Yeah, I guess it's a little bit concerning for me. Um, I share Commissioner Marshall's thoughts and I had the same reading through the staff report and definitely open for more discussion on his proposed motion. Uh, I guess for me it's um, it's always tough as a you know a city planning commissioner and um, you know being sort of under the, the limited authority of what the city can do in, in these types of situations. Um, you know the decommissioning aspect is one that um, is, is concerning and I don't necessarily feel that there's um, really a clear um, answer to that other than, you know, we're, we're leaving it up to the state and the county to, you know, kind of take care of that for us. And that's always a, a tough position to be in as another jurisdiction. Um, I do share going back to Commissioner Johnson's earlier comments, um, related to sort of the connection between condition number two and some of the other conditions, you know, particularly the landscaping, the noxious weed plan, you know, if those are contingent on the grading or the building permit, um, it is being pushed out three years. We're essentially giving, you know, this uh, non-conforming use uh, three years to um, come into compliance and you know, I, I feel that's maybe a bit a bit too long of a grace period. I understand that the, the storm water is the top concern, but I don't understand why, you know, some of these other aspects um, shouldn't come into conformance faster if it's been in, you know, non-conformance for a long time, you know, let's, let's get it where it should be uh, as quickly as we can. Um, I, I also do sort of hesitate, I guess, on the, the balance between the, you know, the infiltration and the water quality issues and, you know, essentially paving this whole site uh, and making it just one big area for runoff. So, um, you know, I, I'm i okay leaving it up to staff to kind of work it out as to what's an acceptable material. And I know we have our, you know, our stormwater standards and BMPs. So I do feel that we're uh, covered in, in that sense. And I have faith in, in Mike, Michelle and our staff that will get the right material out there that will address the stormwater concerns. So um, while I have my, my concerns, I do um, feel confident in the staff in, in that sense. So um, Madam Chair, I appreciate your um, giving me the opportunity to share my thoughts there. There's other discussion. So I don't know who this question would be for, but based on um, Commissioner Gower and Commissioner Marshall's 
concerns is the planning commission a do they have it within their right to reduce that 18 months and what would be an appropriate time frame i don't even i'm not sure um, if we've done that before and i'm not clear on the process so i don't know if that's for brooke Yeah, I, you know, we we chose sort of the 18 months, which gave them sort of this winter and the spring to to get plans in, uh, get plans reviewed, and then it gave them uh, until the batch plants uh, closing in the fall. Um, now, if we're looking at an alternative um, material, you know, that that would allow them over the winter to place that material, which which uh, asphalt wouldn't be placed. Um, staff in reviewing this felt that 18 months was a was a, a reasonable um, timeline for the applicant to get this done, and an acceptable timeline for the city to to bring this into conformance. Hey, Brooke, I think what um, Commissioner Gower and maybe Commissioner Taylor is referring to is they have 18 months to apply for their building permit not 18 months to get all that stuff done. Yeah, and I think so that's question, where- I guess the question to you would be, can we um, crank that down a bit and say, no, you need to get, you know, you've been operating without the cost of this for however many years now. Uh, you need to get it done as soon as you can, and we're gonna give you a reasonable, you know, whatever that might be, but you need to get, you need to jump on it. Yeah, and I, I think that's where we tried to link it to an actual actual construction activity and saying that needs to be done. Um, and we specifically went to paving because paving would require that the storm drainage was done. Um, now, but I do understand uh, um, um, Commissioner Gower's concern about that, 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 you know, invasive species and some of these are, they are also important uh, aspects of what needs to happen out there. Um, we could, I could look to craft a condition that really, maybe a, a third condition that says all work, you know, under under this permit shall be completed within 18 months of approval of the SUP, or something like that. Now they still have the 18 months to get their permits in, but they they, you know, at the end of that 18, this that would be no longer good. And so maybe it's an additional condition that just says all um, matters need to be completed within 18 months. Carl, are you? Is that is that okay? Yes, I'm fine with that condition. Madam Chair, may I ask one cleanup question that is raised? The, um, Brooke, the condition nine speaks to having the uh, asphalt grindings put in place in 18 months. So if they're going with some alternative, uh, I think we need to make sure that that condition applies to that whatever the alternative is as well right now it's just written for the grindings yeah and i think what i would do is is write a new condition that would deal with the whole thing remove that from condition nine because we're going to add the um language that mike michelle uh, uh suggested on the end of that uh requiring that uh an alternative may to grindings may be used uh subject to the approval of the administrator and so we'll move the 18 down so we cover all aspects of this need to be covered in a separate condition so that it will be very clear to to staff as we're reviewing that that what needs to happen. Thank you. Commission, other commissioners, what are your thoughts on the timing? Change change requests. Madam Chair, Commissioner Johnson, um, I, I think the direction we're going is kind of what I was getting at from the beginning that um, essentially from the city standpoint, because it's a code enforcement issue, I think we want this done in a shorter time period. Um, I believe I heard during uh, the applicant's presentation, uh, and I'm not gonna ask him to come on, but he can nod his head if he wants, but I believe the servicing material that they would be proposing is already in place over a majority of the site. So it seems like the bulk of the work that they're gonna have to do is to complete a 
site and grading plan and hydrology plan based on what they have out there already and then work with the city to uh, discuss the uh, material approval. Um, I, I wanted to speak, I think Commissioner Gower brought up a great point about the, the issues with, you know, uh, infiltration versus runoff. And uh, I appreciate the fact that condition, I believe it's 14 that's in there uh, that talks about the, uh, actually 13, um, about the company policy for all of the spills and the items that were being addressed. Uh, Brooke mentioned that in his, his presentation that he's reviewed it. Uh, obviously, the uh, from part of the applicant's presentation, this is something that's that's in place. So, um, I, I like the idea of infiltration. Um, I think we're doing what we can to address the spills issue, uh, and I think this is uh, a suitable way of doing that. So, uh, I guess to your initial question, Madam Chair, I think if we've reconditioned the work to require everything that needs to be done according to this to bring the project into conformance within 18 months. And it sounds like Brooke and Carl have a, a comfort level with getting that in there. I'm comfortable with that as the timing that we're going for uh, rather than trying to, to do anything more manipulative in the, the conditions than that. Commissioner's other thoughts? Okay, so somebody's going to have to make a motion with these revised conditions and language. <laughs> uh, Madam Chair, Commissioner Munoz, just to be clear, what is the time frame that we're we're going for? Because I'm, I'm, it's confusing me. Are we doing twelve months or the eighteen months, or what? What is the time frame we're we're proposing? The way I understand it, and that we, the intent of staff is that it is 18 months for them to complete the all construction activities uh, and subject to the conditions of, of the approval from the approval of this SUP. Okay, so it's from the approval date, they have 18 months, or is it 18 months from tonight? It would be the approval will go out, I believe, in, within two days. So it would be 18 months from them. Once they receive their approval letter, it would be the date that is on that approval letter. They would have 18 months to complete the work as required. Okay. And, and, and maybe Dave can come back on real quick and answer this. What is the, uh, what, how much acreage needs to be done still? How, how big is the area that needs to be done? There's probably about 23 to 25 acres in terms of the paved area. <clears throat> it's a it's a total of 34 acres of the three parcels, but not all of that has uh, has the storage area, and it'll be asphalt paving. And hopefully, we can find an acceptable material that works for the copart and also works for the city for storage. Okay, and the 18 months is from what you guys are seeing is doable. That's not a problem. <laughs> because it's in three parts and they've got they've got vehicles on all of them it's not going to be one where you can go out and do it all at once there's going to be a lot of staging that has to go with it i have my concerns about it but we've got to get on the horse and ride basically starting tomorrow to get plans submitted which not everything in terms of the conditions are we in complete control of the time frame and that's where i have a little bit of dis discomfort however I do understand all the points that have been made tonight relative to this being a, a code enforcement issue. So I do understand that. Thank you, nothing Steve, further. Steve, are you in agreement with the conditions? I, I do wish that there were a little bit longer time frame to accommodate it, to get them all constructed to accommodate for seasonality or if we have to deal with batch plant issues some unforeseens or if we can't get one of these conditions met. I've worked with staff for a long time and I feel that we can probably find some reasonableness in, in dealing with some of these things if such an issue were to come up. My hope is we can get this resolved as quickly as you guys want it. What, what I would propose from staff is that on the additional condition that would require them, uh, we're looking at the condition one that says, you know, if you expand anymore, you're, you're kind of done. And then our second one where you said we need to get things within 18 months, we add an additional statement on there that this time frame, uh, additional time may be allowed at the discretion of the administrator. 
and that would give us some ability to work with them if they were if they did have a construction issue or some other unforeseen issue happen there that we 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 wouldn't completely null and void the the SUP um, with something that's outside of their control. That sound good to fellow commissioners? I'm seeing heads nod. Hey, Brooke, can you just make the motion for us since you have all the language? <laughs> He's not smiling. Madam Chair, can I just ask for a clarification on uh, Commissioner Marshall's suggested motion? I'm not 100% clear on what what the outcome of that would be. So if there's another, if there's an expansion of the non-conforming use, it, you know, since they do what they've done in the past and they expand, it nullifies this SUP that we're considering tonight, then what happens? Where, what state are they in at that point? You know, my 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 view is they had a they and I don't know how to write this, but we can hopefully rely on staff. But um, you know, they had an original SUP from Washoe County, and all that was that's legal. So that that portion of the site is would still operate under that SUP. Um, then this. Uh, the portion that they that they illegally expanded, um, they would have to basically pull off, and and uh, they wouldn't have the ability to uh, have that part of the yard. Um, so either restore it, or you know, uh, they have they have the ability to come in and ask for an SUP for other uses. I suppose it's their property. I mean, it's not. Maybe it's worth a little discussion as to what the consequences should be. I'm well, trying I, to find I, a hammer. Yeah, and I think that hammer is is maybe something we've already have established, which is an enforcement um, similar to this situation, right? They would be before if they had to come in for expansion with non-conforming use to try to come in compliance. The history of this this hearing would come forward, and and it would be at the discretion of the the hearing body to make that decision if if they were to allow that or not allow that. And that may be the option or the appropriate way forward. Maybe bring it back before the planning commission as whether or not they should be able to continue the use or something like that. Well, yeah, I just, I think commissioner Marshall, that your initial comment when you mentioned this, I think was pretty clear in the sense that if, if there's another essentially unpermitted expansion I think what we what we're not doing, we don't want to eliminate their ability to do as Brooks says. If they choose to expand, there is a mechanism in place by which they can do that, which is a special use permit for an expansion of a non-conforming use. Yeah, we want to make sure they can still do that. The condition that you're asking for is making sure that um, they do that rather than just expanding again. Because if they expand again, I would agree we would want this special use permit to be void, but we're not asking to eliminate their ability to continue to ask for expansions within the mechanisms that we have established for the city. That's yep. my understanding of what you're looking for. That's correct. Madam Chair, if I could, this is Angela Foos, Acting CD Director. My computer's died, so I'm, I'm here, but you don't see me. I, there, there is another alternative if we get you know, 16 months into this process from today, and they don't have all of their final construction work done, they can always come in and ask to amend one of the conditions, which would be the timing condition. So it can, it would come back before planning commission. You guys could take a look at the unique um, circumstances as to why they couldn't meet that that 18 month time frame, And then you can choose to either extend that time frame or not extend that time frame. Thank you, Angela. So that would replace, Angela, that would replace uh, Brooks' language about leaving it to the, you know, deferring to the administrator on that issue? If, again, in a worst case scenario, let's say 
there's a pandemic and the world shuts down and they're not able to construct this within 18 months. Another alternative that they have is to come back and amend that condition that's specific to the timing. And if they had a good reason as to why they couldn't make that timeline, uh, maybe all the batch plants burned down and then they couldn't get access to asphalt, I don't know, maybe whatever reason it is. If it was a reason that um, Planning Commission felt was adequate, then U.S. Planning Commission could amend that condition and extend that timeline. Okay, so then, Brooke, the current condition, I mean, the condition that you're looking at would just not have that def uh, referral to the um, administrator would just say, get it done within 18 months, and if they can't, they can come back and and ask for an extension of that condition. That's the way I understand it from how okay. uh, Angela's described it. Okay, thank you. Okay, commissioner. Madam Chair, I can, I can try a motion, but what I might ask is, could I uh, make a motion and then have Brooke, are you prepared to list those conditions? And I and uh, I think it's um, what I have on my list is an amendment to condition nine. Well, no, you're going to write a new condition that really addresses the 18 months issue, right? Correct. Uh, from the direction I have from uh, the commission, uh, we'd, we'd see condition nine would change. Uh, we would add, we would remove the 18 months for completion on okay, condition wait nine. Wait a minute. Can I first make sure. the motion and then you can go and then I can adopt that and then you can, then we can have a second, hopefully. That makes sense. So just, I'm sorry, I just need to find, get onto my uh, motion page. Um, in the matter of LDC, C, LDC 21-00016, based on compliance with applicable findings, I move to approve the special use permit subject to the conditions listed in the staff report as modified by Brooks summary. Uh, condition nine would read, prior to the issuance of a grading permit, the applicant will be required to provide plans depicting the areas of asphalt grindings, provide structural sections for the areas for asphalt grindings, disclose the origin of the grindings, and provide a graduation table of the grindings for approval of the community development department. The, the plan shall also demonstrate all interior drive aisles will be paved per code. Um, alternative paving materials may be approved per the approval of the administrator. And then we would look at condition 16 would read, um, no, uh, any further expansion of the site in a, let's see, let me strike that. Um, any further violation of a non-conforming expansion would um, subject the uh, SUP approval as void. And then uh, condition 17, all construction work as outlined in the SUP shall be completed within 18 months of the special use permit approval. That sounds, that sounds good. Carl, will you clean up the condition on, uh, on expiration of the permit if there is a violation? Right. I would recommend I, something that further expansion of the non-conforming use without the permits invalidates the SUPs um, subject to this approval. Okay, so moved. Okay, we have a motion. We have a second. Turn Gower, I'll second. I can make all the findings with those conditions as modified. 
Okay, we have a motion and a second. Do we have any further discussion? Michelle, can you take a vote, please? Kathleen Taylor? Yes. John Marshall? Yes. Peter Gower? Yes. Mark Johnson? Yes. Arthur Munoz? Yes. Alex Felto? Yes. Motion carries. Okay, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much, Brooke, for your help, and thank you, Carl. Thank you all. Thank Have you, Commissioners. Night. Have a good night. Okay, item number six, Truckee Meadows Regional Planning Liaison Report. Commissioner Johnson, there you are. Uh, the meeting for February was canceled. Uh, the only item on the agenda was uh, returning to the um, power line issue north of Pyramid Lake and the county requested an additional month to uh, continue to work out the details on that. So uh, the next meeting I believe is scheduled for the 25th of March. Thank you. Angela, staff announcements? Good evening. Uh, for the record, Angela Foos, Acting CD Director. From our last Planning Commission meeting, City Council met uh, last, last week and voted to approve the West Ranger zone change. That was the three-acre site in Panther Valley. Planning Commission had unanimously recommended approval. But we also had an appeal scheduled for last week on one of the daybreak tentative maps. That appeal was withdrawn, and so that actually did not have to go to City Council for review. And those are my only two updates. Great. Item number eight, commissioner's suggestions for future agenda items. Commissioners, I don't see anybody. Moving on to item number nine. Michelle, do we have any public comment? No, we do not. Okay, we'll close public comment. Item 10, adjournment. Uh, Madam, uh, I, I have a real quick statement. Um, the mayor's park uh, was actually completed or some of the stuff they were doing up there has been completed. And I just wanted to commend uh, the planning commission and the uh, the council for everything they've done up there. And we're looking forward to getting the kids on the field pretty soon. So park looks beautiful, new bathrooms, uh, new fields. It's It's amazing. So appreciate everybody's efforts up there. Oh, fantastic. Thank you, Commissioner Munoz. Item number 10, adjournment. So moved. Second. Third. All those in favor? <laughs> Good night, everyone. Have a good night.